Okay, this is going to be a pretty good series. We are going to do something that you should be able to do. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the McGolf Shop. And today is the beginning of a series of videos. I call them the technique videos. And a lot of uh, the guys responding on the YouTube channel are asking about, you know, the ferrules, the shafts, MOIs, that kind of stuff. So I thought this was an excellent opportunity to show you from start to finish. And we'll go into some pretty good detail along the way of how to take this iron and turn it into something that fits. Now, I did a fitting for a young man um, in his late 20s, early 30s, and he swings pretty hard. Hard meaning fast. He doesn't swing hard, he just swings very fast. And he had some, uh, these are 90 gram stiff shafts in a, one of these Titleist RSI ones, okay? Uh, not a uh, gonna put any particular company down because they all have their all they all have their pluses and minuses but he wanted to stay with this particular iron so that's what we're going to do however during the fitting we found that the kbs tours were a much better fit for him because they're slightly heavier and he could find the club in his backswing and it made an excellent change so we're going to take all these irons and I have a set of two, four, six, eight irons, and we're gonna change them into something that this young man can use. So, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna show you about taking this club apart, and how you take it apart, and why. And then we are going to talk about balancing the clubs, because I was asked on another video the difference between MOI and frequency matching and what they do. Then we'll do how we assemble the clubs in club head weights, uh, cutting it down, the different techniques that we would use or you could use. And then the final part is the gripping. So this is going to be a multi-part uh, video. Okay. So the first part is in order to put these things together correctly, we got to take them apart. So how are we going to do that? Well, now you've seen me pull some shafts before. But in every instance, shop safety, right? I'm gonna be working with a flame, so I always wear leather gloves. Now, these leather gloves, you can go get at the Home Depot, Menards, uh, Lowe's, whatever, uh, even at some like the Rural Kings or something like TSCs, and you get these, they're just like five bucks a piece, but man, oh man, do they work, okay? You can really, don't cheap out and get some thinner ones. You want the kinds that are really gonna be, that you can still have mobility, but it still protects you from the heat. Uh, this is important because in the way of club building, you're going to get things hot. And the last thing you want to do is get blisters on the ends of your fingers because now you can't grab your own golf club. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Normally what you could do, here's where we get technical, ferrule. Now, if you wanted to save this ferrule, and for whatever reason that would be, let's say it's um, special, it's one of a kind you'd want to keep it. You could take a piece of wet leather and just wrap it around here and it'll protect it from the heat. There's also some chemicals you can buy from like the Golf Works and you can spray it on there and it gives a protective coating from the heat in order to prevent it from melting. Uh, there you can always, I've seen guys use terry cloth that's been really really wet and they put that on there. You can do that as well. This is not a special ferrule and I think we're gonna give the young man a treat and put a colored ferrule on it so we'll see so what am i going to do i'm going to take and heat this thing 10 to 15 seconds in three different spots 10 to 15 seconds in three different spots then i'm going to try and twist it off now i try that because this is a steel shaft in a graphite shaft i would never ever ever do that you always use in my puller that you guys have seen before uh and there's different kinds of pullers, and we'll talk about that once I get these things taken off. Uh, if it doesn't want to work, then off comes the ferrule, and into the puller it goes. That's just how these work. Sometimes they're hard, sometimes they're not. That's be about being flexible. So let's see what we can do. 
Oh, let me talk about this. Applying heat. All right. This is a butane torch. Okay. This burns a little cooler and a smaller flame, and it gets more precise of where I can apply the heat. Now, they make propane torches that you usually see for uh, copper work, for sw uh, swedging or sweating on fittings and putting fittings together. Great, it's a great tool for that particular job, and it can be used on something as, as, as big as this. But when you're talking about wood heads that have a lot of paint, it gets pretty hot and that flame is pretty big. So can you use it? Yeah, but you have to be extraordinarily careful. Now other guys have used heat guns. Heat guns can do the job, but it is really slow. So if you want to be, if you've got a bunch of time, then that's fine. But this, and you, you can pick these guys up for like 20 bucks in a kit. And you just go get you some, uh, some butane and you're on your way. And this thing can do more than just this, but uh, I start grills with it. <laughs> And, but this is what we're going to do here. All right, let's see if this works. And it does. All right, see how we got that out? Now, off camera, this is the other part. While it's warm, hosel brush. And there's always stuff in there. You see that goo on there? That's the goo we don't want, okay? And that's another reason for these gloves. So that got cleaned up. Now, there are always, if in case you get it kind of warm in the the area of this right here, some kind sometimes can get discolored. So what I like to do is I put it on my glands wedge wheel and I just polish it back up and away to go. Now this has a little extra something in the base, so I'm going to take a drill. I'm going to drill it out, clean it out, and then I'm going to hit polish it, and then we'll be done. So I'll be right back. It was just that easy. Now I really didn't need to polish it. It just becomes kind of a habit. But I did have to drill some stuff out. And when you tap it, nothing comes out and it looks good on the inside. You know you're done. So that's basically taking the club head off in a nutshell and some of the different tech, uh, techniques and tips that I would use. Oh, need a little bit more. See that? So we'll give it a little bit more. A little more heat, a little easier. that didn't have anything on the bottom so we're good to go all right so you're gonna just watch me take them off one by one we might speed this up just a little bit so you don't get bored and then we'll come back and talk a little bit more about inside the hosels
Okay, now I'm on the very last one. I want to show you a little bit more. A lot of OEMs will put extra glue in the bottom in order, uh, maybe from a swingway point of view, could be just a way they make them point of view, um, just anything. Uh, sometimes you'll find weights in the bottom of these things. Might be to swing weight it, sometimes it's vibration dampening, it's whatever. But they are a pain in the butt to get out of here. So, I don't have any here, but I'm going to show you a technique once I clean this out, uh, how to get rid of that weight. Okay, so you saw me disappear off camera a couple of times, and what that was is I had a bunch of uh, goop on the bottom of these from a couple of clubs, and I just had to drill them out and then clean them back out again. Now, let's see you get a weight in the bottom, right? Although this is a big one, but sometimes it looks, uh, you know, like those guys, right? They're smaller sometimes, most of the times they are, uh, but sometimes they're not. So they, they're in the bottom of here because they don't stick in the bottom of the club very well. And that'll be another assembly technique I'll show you later on. But how do you get this thing out, right, without drilling? Well, number one is if it's brass or lead, you could probably drill it out. Now, that's time consuming. You start with a smaller drill, so you get your center, and you just keep working your way out. Now, eventually what should happen is you create enough heat that it breaks the epoxy bond underneath and it pulls out with the drill. That's a sometimes yes, sometimes no. Another one is, is that you heat up this hosel down in the bottom area nice and hot. Now, not cherry red hot, but you go around it, you know, maybe 20 seconds, 20 seconds, 20 seconds, and you go around, you do it again, do it again, maybe three times in a row. Now, I use an awl, okay, an awl, A-W-L. And this point finds the center of that weight, and then I, I work it around. And that's me trying to break the epoxy bond. All right, once you get it... Once you get it so it's rotating nice and free, if the center doesn't happen, you work it on the edge and then you work it around a little slower just to break it out. And then you basically slam it on the slam it on the uh, your bench, and it tends to slide right out. Uh, you might have to use a combination of both, but that's just what it is. Now I want to clean this out just a little bit more. That's better. So the last part is, and we talked about saving the ferrule, right, on the on this. Well, if you do it right, see that it's not real bad. All right, you, there's just a little bit, a little bit right where the uh, ferrule and the hosel touched each other. That's just not one. That's all of them, and that's because I aimed the flame upward this way. All right, not on this, not on the ferrule, but up. And when you do that, you can you press the heat upwards. I learned that from a couple of Navy welders. And that sends the heat up where it's supposed to, not down where you don't want it to go. So easily I could take, I could, if I was just taking them off, waiting them, polishing whatever, and putting them back on, I could easily do it and just a little finishing and voila, there you go. I could probably pull them, with a little bit of heat, I could probably pull them off and use them to be regular, but you know what? We're doing a whole brand new set, so why not a whole new ferrule? So, now what I'm going to do is, you know, they're all kind of a little bit dirty. Uh, I'm going to clean them up with a uh, just a regular wire brush, and then I'm going to polish them up so they're nice and uh, shiny, and then I'm going to weigh them and make them for the assembly. So that's the first part of this whole, let's make a new set of irons. And uh, hopefully you liked it. If you did, like below and subscribe. So that way you know when I put out my next one. And until then, let's see your scores go low. Uh, don't don't chimp out cheap out